come to my mind. We had a great run of it. Uh, he's a great coach, and I'm uh, proud to have him as a friend and proud to have had the times that we had. We, we, uh, we just had a great experience. Can you answer Switzer's question then? What? Do you think you can answer Barry's question now? I've never, I've never been able to know why. That, not just that, but anything else. <laughs> no, I can't answer those questions. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Booth Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, you know, it's it's been a rough offseason. You know, I, I'm actually trying to, to tone it down just a little bit because, you know, we sit here and we look at the Cowboys, and every year we get disappointed because they're not doing something in free agency. And the reality is they never do anything in free agency. But during that period, we still have had some success, okay? Um, we're not winning Super Bowls. Let's be clear about this. And I've gone on, and, and I've killed Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones and the mom-pop organization that they are and, and not having the foresightedness to understand the changing dynamics and stuff. But here's the thing, though. I will have to admit that from the standpoint of where we were this time last year with Dak Prescott, you know, still rehabbing and not cleared to do much of anything with D law, literally having back surgery, Micah Parsons, not even being part of the team, just getting Dan Quinn here, fresh from Atlanta, bringing in Atlanta players from a team that he got run out of town with, with a defense that gave up more, more um, come from behind victories than anybody else, probably in the history of football, including the biggest meltdown in the Super Bowl. And having the players that we had, that we looked at this team and we just said, this team is just bad. It's just bad. Uh, let's be clear here. We are at a better starting point than we were last year at this time. D Law. Uh, Dak Prescott, they're both working out and getting in better shape. You look across the board at our division as opposed to like the AFC West where, you know, all of a sudden it seems like they've become juggernauts, you know, where there's a great quarterback that's come to the division with Russell Wilson and things. You know, all we got came into our division to the Washington football team is Carson Wentz. And Carson Wentz, it, listening to Jim Ursey, who literally said, this was the biggest mistake I have ever made in my life. I had to kind of say, really? Bringing in Carson Wentz? Was he really worse than you letting go Peyton Manning and seeing Peyton Manning win two Super Bowls? Was he really worse in that time that you were out and got pulled over um, with your speech slurred? with all kinds of bottles of prescription drugs and a wad of cash and being arrested, it was worse than that, that Carson Wentz is now on his third team in three years. And all, be it, let, let me preface it this with, of course, Colin Cowherd thinks that Carson Wentz is better than Dak. Uh, the numbers don't bear it out. I, I think that maybe Colin Cowherd was hanging out with Jim Mercy. Just saying, just saying. We, of course, are looking at the phase of free agency. Okay, we suck at free agency. We, we just don't do it. And you could directly correlate the Dallas Cowboys from the time free agency and the salary cap era began that the Cowboys have never learned how to deal with free agency. They just haven't. They've not had good things happen, and this is what's handicapped the Dallas Cowboys from being world champions. And, and the thing is, is they don't even recognize it. They look at they look at free agency like, you know, we look at taking out the trash. You know, the wife said, take out the trash. I don't really want to take out the trash. But I'm just gonna do enough. I'm just gonna do it so that way I don't have to listen to my wife talking about taking out the trash. Okay, that's what I say, Mike. Can you take out the trash? Okay, it, it's something that you have to do. It's you know, as as Philly Five Hundred would say, matrimonial duties. You know, you know what I'm saying. It's something that you have to do to appease the masses. What an idiot! What an idiot! 
Yeah, that, that's the way the Cowboys look at it. We're not going to really get into free agency. We're not going to do like other people. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do we'll do just enough to get by. That, that's what we're going to do. And in to some regard, you could look at it and say, yeah, there's a whole lot of players that were overpaid in free agency that just didn't pan out. But you can also look at some teams now recently that have done this free agency thing, and they've become Super Bowl champions. So there's a delicate balance there. Now, shout out to my buddy, my brother from another mother, nothing but the best, Law and Nation, and Stacy Schubert for sharing this to me. Law ended up catching this clip from Michael Irvin. That you, This is pretty damning. This is damning when the playmaker – talks now, now see i'm gonna say michael Irvin. he's very vocal and michael Irvin says a lot of things but you know sometimes when michael Irvin talks it's almost like foreshadowing i remember last year during training camp when he was talking about the covid shots okay now listen don't don't, don't give me your hate i know i know some of y'all will go crazy about the covid shot and all that. regardless this was something that the nfl said you should do as part of the employment. But he put out there and said, why wouldn't you do a shot when you do all of the things that you do to stay on the field? You know, you've seen Dak Prescott's ankle broken completely. You know how many different shots and everything else that he had to do? Hell, when he had the calf muscle um, strain, he ended up doing this, uh, I can't remember what you call it, because that's one of the treatments I'm going to be getting for my knee. But basically, they take your blood, and they put it through a centrifuge, and, and they come out with the stem cells, and then they inject it back into the calf muscle to help it heal faster. Okay? And if you've ever done sports and have had cortisone shots, hell, I still to this day get what I call the pig grease, excuse me, the chicken grease injections in my knee, where they take the cone from a chicken and they make it into a gel and they inject it into my knee. If I could tell you the amount of times I've had my needles stuck in my knees just pulling out the extra fluid, um, the shots, the pain pills, and the ibuprofen and the uh, Tanadol and things like that, that you do to stay on the field. He had said, you know, hey, you mean the shot is where you drop the line? And it was almost like foreshadowing because Amari Cooper ended up with COVID, missed two games completely in the third game, ended up not really being there. And you could kind of point to that situation right there was the beginning of the end of Amari Cooper being here with Dallas where literally the Cowboys basically said, you know what, you're not a team player. We got to get rid of you. So I, I tend to listen to Michael Irvin, and he'll be – at the autograph signing show this weekend, and maybe we can get him to elaborate a little bit. But this is what he said, and, and shout out to Law Nation for this video here. There's no way you can say this team is better. It's what area are you trying to get better in, on the football field or in the financial salary cap area? What area has been the dominant thought here? And obviously, it's been the salary cap, so we can't say that they are getting any better on the football field. Wow. You want to hear it again? Let, let's hear it again. No way you can say this team is better. It's what area are you trying to get better in? On the football field or in the financial salary cap area? What area has been the dominant thought here? And obviously, it's been the salary cap. So we can't say that they're getting any better on the football field. Hard to argue with that. Uh, how can you argue with that one? They have gotten better on the salary cap. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Yay, salary cap warriors. Yes. And and right now they went from being one of the worst teams in salary cap space to now having, you know, uh, middle of the pack. They got $15 million. Um, They have another additional $10 million coming with um, Niall Collins coming June 1st. But, you know, that's great that they've got some cash to work with. 
But the problem is, is having cash to work with doesn't mean that you can necessarily win. Let me look at the salary over the cap real quick and just see where we're looking at right now. You know, like the Panthers. Panthers got a lot of cap space. They got $31 million right now. They are winning right now when it comes to cap space. But do you think they're going to be challenging for a Super Bowl? I don't. Texans, $23 million. You think the Texans will be challenging for a Super Bowl this year? I don't. But when you go down the line here with some of the teams you start thinking about, like, say, the Rams, Rams got $8 million. And, and you can say that they have definitely tried to put as much talent as they can on the field. You look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers bringing back Tom Brady. You know, they only have $7 million, right? But you can say that they've used their money wisely and have a really good team. The Cardinals even, you could say they got $7 million. The uh, Ravens, you know, as you go down here, you don't see teams. The Bills are actually over the cap by $200,000. You don't see teams that are great positions in the salary cap that are challenging for Super Bowls. Now, the, the, uh, the exception to this rule would probably be the New York Giants, who only have $800,000. Uh second worst cap space situation in the NFL. They are definitely losing in the talent on the field as well as in the salary cap era. But as you go down through here, what you notice is teams trying to save money, teams with a whole lot of cash, they're not the teams that are looking to be the winners on the field. So there's a delicate balance there of making sure that you don't Waste money, I, and I'm, I'm not one to say waste money at all. I'm not not suggesting that because the Cowboys would have even more cap space if it weren't for the mistakes that they've made. Because when you go through and you end up having six point eight million dollars right now, six point eight million dollars you're paying Jalen Smith. So as you go through and undercut your talent and say we can't afford. Amari Cooper, the direct correlation is because you messed up on the salary cap to begin with, that you're paying $6.8 million to Jalen Smith, that you're paying a cap hit of $6 million to Amari Cooper, that you're paying $2 million of cap money to Ken O'Neill, and you'll be paying another $5 million to Lyle Collins. And as you say, we can't afford players. It's from a direct result of your bad management before. Don't blame the players for getting paid. Look at the man in the mirror who paid the players the wrong ones or weren't able to actually negotiate decent deals. You're the one that signed the contract for Zeke Elliott after he held out. You're the one that decided to pay Jalen Smith early. You're the one that decided that we can't live with Amari Cooper and things. These things right here, that's why you have cap issues. And if you can't do these things right from the jump street, well, don't blame the players. You know, don't, don't hate the players. Hate the game. Because you guys are the ones that messed it up not the players. So with that being said, I'm going to get out of here.